record them. So there is a recording on this, and I don't know what the official wording is when you record it, but I will tell you I've heard it many times. I pretty much know what it is, which is uh, to make everybody aware that this is a, that we are going to record this, not to catch anybody at anything. It's just simply so that we can help others with this information. So if you don't want to be on a recording, this would be a good time to drop off. Um, with that, I'm going to begin by uh, telling you that I am Bob Siegel. I am the catalyst with the 5G Connected Future Incubator, from, which is part of the ATDC, the Advanced Technology Development Center at Georgia Tech. I am located here at the beautiful Curiosity Lab, which is a phenomenal facility for entrepreneurs, for startup companies to work at uh, not only at low cost, but you, we have 5G millimeter wave here as well as regular 5G, and a workshop and working spaces and all that. Um, so with that, um, with that little bit of a commercial, oh, by the way, I'm sponsored by Peach Tree Corners and Mobile. Um, we had a, we have a, a regular, a monthly roundtable with the 5G incubator, and a number of questions came up about how to, um, how to get access to federal funding. And one of the great things about ATDC is that we have resources like Connie Castillo, who is here with us today. Uh, who knows about this stuff, and we also have coaches, catalysts like yours truly, who know how to get, who know how to reach Connie and get her stuff needed. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Connie, and um, we seem to have some people stuck on another bridge, so I'm going to try to circulate the new bridge number to those folks while um, Connie goes ahead. Uh, with that, Connie. Hi, good morning, everyone. Glad we're finally getting connected. It's Monday morning. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, we got some feedback coming from some people. So if you can go ahead and mute, um, I think especially as Andre, uh, it's getting a lot from you. So if you could go ahead and mute yours, um, that's much better. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so we're going to have a time at the end for questions, uh, but I'm just going to go through our presentation. It's it's, it's going to be a fire hose, a lot of information, um, and you're not expected to remember everything, but just give you a starting point. So let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. So, okay, it's disabled, it says, so I can't share my screen. So, <laughs> so Bob? Uh, <laughs> I am going to give you the power to share your screen. And you should have it now. Uh, uh, there it is. Can everyone see it? Yes. Okay, great. So like I said, this is going to be a fire hose. There's my contact information. If you have any questions after this that I don't get to, happy to have a conversation with any of you to clarify and then kind of see, evaluate you guys and see where you are and see how this might help. So let's get started. So you see this uh, message in a bottle. Sometimes a lot of people feel that getting federal funding is kind of like throwing a bottle in the ocean and then hoping it gets to the right place. I mean, it's a vast amount of uh, information and it's very complex. Uh, so hopefully this is going to, this session is going to help you um, understand a little bit more. So first of all, some people think of federal funding as an ATM machine. You just ask for money and you're going to get it. Well, that's not how it goes. Um, it's, there is a lot more to it than just asking for money. There's actually a roadmap to funding. And unfortunately, it looks like this. 
so I am here to just show you where to start and give you some direction um, of where to go and where to go next. So let's get started. First, there's a need. You guys have a need for money. There's a reason why you're looking after money in the beginning. Well, there's also a need from the federal government. There's a reason that they're giving you money. It's that, like I said, it's not an ATM where they just say, oh, it's free for the taking, you guys take it. So there's a need. So there has to be also a purpose. What is the purpose for the, the funding that they are going to provide? What is the purpose that you need the funding for? And both of these need to match before you can actually go after some funding. So first of all, you need to figure out what you need the funding for. There are some major categories of funding that are available. And so we're, I'm gonna briefly go over some. Some might apply to you now, some might apply to you in the past, some might apply to you in the future. The first major category is research. This is like we have Ben Franklin over there who put a key on the end of a kite and went out in an electric storm and there was all of a sudden there was a thunderstorm and the key, the, it got, the kite got struck and it carried electricity down to the key. He discovered electricity. So research is discovery. It's open-ended questions that are just like, what happens? Let's just experiment. A lot of the funding that's available for research goes to straight research goes to um, academic institutions or universities. And this is sometimes called basic research. It's scientific, technical, what happens if something happens, if I do this. The next category is called research and development, also called applied research. This is where you have identified that from your research or from someone else's research, hey, what happens if we apply this to a certain problem? We have a problem. Let's see if the research, what are the questions that need to be answered to see if it's actually going to solve that problem. So that's research and development, applied research. Then there's straight development. Development is, you know it's going to work. You might need to put some, uh, uh, some bells and whistles on something. You might need to modify it for a certain customer's needs. Uh, but you, for the most part, you know it's going to work, at least in general, on the, the topic or the area of interest. You just need to build it, uh, make it, uh, instead of a prototype, maybe you need to have it uh, actually be a working uh, prototype. Or maybe you have a working prototype and you need to modify it for a particular customer. Then there's procurement purchasing. This is you are actually not going to be doing any research, you're not going to be doing research and development or just development. You just want to sell it. You're like, hey, I know that X agency will needs this, so I want to sell it to them. I want them to be my customer. And finally, we have operations. This is you need money to keep your doors open. You need money that is going to help you uh, to do a manufacturing line, to buy some equipment, to pay salaries. Uh, to buy supplies so that you can manufacture something and actually then sell it. So this is your operations money. There are different funding forms. Bob and I were having a conversation before and he was like, he was wanting me to do this talk and he was like, can you do grant, uh, talk about grants? And I said, well, do you just want grants or you want contracts and grants or federal funding in general? Grants are a specific type of funding not all uh, funding is available via grants and contracts are another one. It's not all funding is available via contracts. I'm sure you've heard of some of the large government contractors. Uh, you know, you have the Lockheed, the Boeing, you have Raytheon. Uh, those are large contractors that sell to the government. But there are other contracts that might be for, say, development work or research and development work. And then we're going to have loans. Loans are, you might have heard of the SBA, the Small Business Administration. They have SBA-backed loans. That means that you can go to your bank, your local bank, and say you're a small business and you get better terms because it's an SBA-backed loan. Problem with a loan is they're still going to charge you interest. Might be better terms, but you're going to have to pay it back at some point. So use the loans 
for um, things that are short term. I say, let's say you have a contract to deliver 10,000 widgets. You need to have some money to buy the materials for those to manufacture those 10,000 widgets. As soon as you sell your 10,000 widgets, you pay off the loan. So think of it as a short term solution, not a long term solution. Another one is sub awards. Maybe you're not going to actually go after the money, but you're going to actually be part of someone else's award. So think of this as you're going to be a tier one supplier. That means you are going to supply to the entity that has a contract. You are not going to enter into a direct, uh, into a direct relationship with the federal government. Same with OTAs. OTAs is a fairly, uh, other transaction authority is a fairly new uh, way to do government funding. And it's kind of like a sub award, but it's usually done with consortium. So it could be like Georgia Tech and UC Berkeley and uh, uh, T-Mobile and three startups and a contractor. And you kind of all go together, combine together to come up with a collective solution. And of those, uh, one entity is, maybe it's Georgia Tech, is going to be the, uh, the owner of that relationship. And they are going to deal directly with the government. And you are going to be a sub, you're going to be a direct uh, uh, awardee and a direct recipient of funds because you're going to contract with Georgia Tech. So it's kind of like a sub award, uh, but you're collectively coming up with a solution. Then there's another one called a CRADA. Also, it's a Cooperative Research and Development Agreement. First thing, let me clarify, there are a lot of acronyms in the federal government. So just get used to all the federal uh, acronyms and go with the flow and just know that they're gonna be there. Um, there's actually a whole dictionary on government um, acronyms. So a CRADA um, is, we'll get into more information in just a minute on that, but it's not any, funding directly available. That's why I have an asterisk there, but it could help your company and you could explore CRADAs. So let's get more details. Grants. This is a mechanism to provide assistance to you. So if you go after a grant, that means they are providing money to you to assist you in developing something per se. Um, it's, it's, it's usually going to be some benefit to society. So if you have a medical device that is using, um, you know, it's an autonomous robot for doing surgery, uh, the surgery, the National Institutes of Health is not going to buy it from you, but they want to empower you to actually uh, do the research, the research and development, the development to get this out into the hands of the surgeon so that your surgeries uh, can be uh, done more effectively and more accurately. Um, the scope of work, this is what you're actually going to do with the money, um, are usually is more flexible. The budget is more flexible. There's still structure, but it's more flexible than, say, a contract. Um, and sometimes it allows you to get the money up front. So you might get it, it allows for it, but it might not come up front, but it does allow, say you might get a third up front, a third halfway through and a third at the end, but it allows the, the government to give the money to you um, up front. And there are regulations, as I mentioned, and for grants, that's going to be the Code of Federal Regulations and the Office of Management Budget Regulations, OMB which comes from the White House. So these are the guidelines that are set for grants. Um, there are sources of grants. We've talked, we're talking federal, but they're also state. Um, local might be from a chamber. It might be from a, uh, a city. It might be from a county. There are also grants that come from foundations. Usually foundation grants um, are not going to go to for-profit entities but there are exceptions. Um, it could also be for uh, from nonprofits uh, that you, know, you could you could actually tap into some of this money. And then there are some large corporations that have philanthropic arms that also give out uh, uh, funding for grants. In contrast, we have contracts. Contracts are legally binding. 
uh, agreement that you're going to deliver something in exchange for what they call consideration. Nine times out of 10, that's going to be money. So you're going to build something, you will send in an invoice, and you'll get payment for it. It is, while it could benefit your company or your, if you as an individual, if you're a researcher, it's usually benefiting the funder. So they have a problem per se, and they want you to solve that problem, whatever that problem is that they've defined. And if you can solve it, they will pay you for it. Um, and this was what I was saying about deliverables. Maybe you have a scope of work that has 10 items. When you complete the first item, you send them an invoice, they will pay you for that first item. Then you do the second, third item, et cetera. And so you, payment is upon receipt of whatever the deliverable is and the type of contract that you have. Uh, there are going to be more fiscal requirements, more reporting. You will be required to have a detailed budget that you make sure that your books are accurate uh, for having a federal contract. Um, and this is um, governed by what's called the FAR, the Federal Acquisition Regulation. If you get funding from any of the Defense Department components, Army, Navy, Air Force, um, DARPA, SOCOM, et cetera, you will have also what they call the DFARs or the Defense Federal Acquisition Regulations. Notice it's acquisition regulations. They eventually want to acquire it from you, or this is part of the acquisition process, but they want to make sure that you do it correctly. So the sources can be for a contract. You can get federal, state, local. Companies can give you a contract. Nonprofits can give you a, a contract. And you're familiar with customers. You say that you're going to build those 10,000 widgets for them, and they'll buy it from you. That's your customer. The CRADA that I mentioned, um, uh, the CRADA is the Cooperative Research and Development Agreement. It's a written agreement with a federal, one or more federal labs and a non-federal party. That could be you as an entrepreneur, that could be you as a company. Um, it is a non-federal entity. And what they are basically doing is giving you uh, cap more capabilities. So through their laboratories, uh, maybe you'll be able to do some testing on the, in their lab. Maybe you'll be able to access some of their experts. This gives you the opportunity to advance your technology, your innovation, your potential product without outlaying funds yourself. And so there are no funds provided, but it is there as a resource for you. Um, and there are several different uh, avenues to go about getting these CRADAs in place, but you, it's good to talk to researchers uh, that are at the federal labs and see what they can have done for you. Um, it's going to be more of a relationship. It's going to be a time where you're going to need to know what they're doing and they're going to need what, to know what you need done before they can offer you uh, some of these capabilities. They're not sitting around just waiting for you to, uh, you know, it's not like you pick a number and you're number 10 and when they get to number 10, they're gonna do the work for you. So there has to be a scheduling and it has to fit with what they are working on. So how do you find some of these? Um, well, I like to say you can do a Kevin Bacon. Uh, remember Kevin Bacon, the seven degrees of separation that was like, I don't know, 10 plus years ago when they were saying that Kevin Bacon's an actor and everyone's connected somehow within seven degrees uh, to Kevin Bacon. So this is an example right here. This 5G enabled energy innovation advanced wireless network uh, was for federal labs. This was funding from the Department of Energy that went to federal labs to do work uh, on the 5G. So you would not get money, but I looked and I found who were the awardees of this funding. Well, we have here the Brookhaven National Laboratory. Uh, all these different laboratories received this Department of Energy funding. So again, you can't get the funding, but right here, here's the name of the, the actual award, 5G enabled, reliable and decentralized IoT framework with blockchain. If you're working on something like that, hey, maybe you can reach out to the Brookhaven National uh, Laboratory and say, let's develop a relationship. 
I have some work that needs to be doing done in this area. Maybe you can do this for me or help me assist me via a CRADA. So work backwards and see who's received the funding um, for this or any of the federal labs. Um, and then you can see if you, this might fit with what you're doing. You can also just do a search on what the federal, federal labs are. Uh, there are resources out there that tell you what they're, they're working on, but sometimes it's hard figuring out who to contact. So this gives you the PI that tells you who at that, in, at that um, federal lab is actually doing the work. So this is a chart that kind of balances out what I just went through. And I'm, oh, we're going to send these slides out afterwards, so don't feel it's an eye chart to read right now, but it kind of gives you a comparison of, you know, Previously, I was just doing it on each slide, and this gives you a side-by-side -side comparison. So I briefly mentioned foundation grants. So foundations are out there that give grants. However, foundations usually do not give grants to for-profit entities. They give grants to uh, nonprofits, to schools, to community groups, to uh, groups that are benefiting society more. Uh, so, but you can sometimes, if you're doing something in what's called a social, uh, you know, so social entrepreneurship, there are cases where the foundation can give funding uh, via what they call PRIs or program related investments. So it's kind of a cross between a grant and a loan uh, where it is low interest, but you're going to pay it, but instead of going to the federal government, you're going to pay it to that foundation. So maybe the American Cancer Society, the Bill Gates Foundation, uh, you know, these are entities that you might explore looking at. And then there are the philanthropic organizations that I mentioned. These are the, the, the organizations that, as of 2018, that have uh, the most philanthropic activity. So like I know on here for sure that Home Depot has an, an, inst, uh, an initiative to increase STEM education. So if you have a VR technology that is teaching uh, elementary school students how to conduct experiments virtually, <clears throat> hey, that you might explore going after some funding from Home Depot. Um, this is just a list. Again, it's going to take some time to go through and what they're uh, looking at what they might be um, have available for your company. But majority today, we're talking about federal funds. So the next thing you need to learn about is solicited and unsolicited. Going back to our example of the ATM, most of the time, uh, the agencies are not just anytime you want um, having the um, open the ATM where you can actually go get money. They're usually going to be select times and that is called solicit. It's when they are interested. But let's first talk unsolicited. This is maybe where you're going, yes, I want to do something with the Air Force and I am going to just write a proposal to get some funding. It is recipient initiated. That's you guys. You guys approach the agency or the entity and say, hey, I would like some money for this. I believe it fits within your mission. Um, you, it's basically what I call cold calling because they might or not, might not be interested in it. You might hit you know, the nail on the head and be able to actually uh, get some funding. Um, you might get an interest in uh, having from that particular agency, but they might say, sorry, we're not interested, and they close the door on you. But it might be worth it. But this is how you go about doing that CRADA. Like I said earlier, it's not funding available, but if you can reach out to them and say, hey, I understand that you're doing research in X. I understand maybe that you might be able to help me because I'm doing research in X, Y, and I need the capabilities or of your X to complete my Y. So that might be the opportunity for the unsolicited. Solicited, on the other hand, if you're talking federal funds and state and local, uh, that is going to be an agency initiated. That means that they are going to say, hey, we are looking for a new 5G 
uh, you know, security system for our federal buildings. You're like, great, that's just what I'm doing. I can uh, submit a proposal and actually see if they want like my solution. Solicited is they are initiating it. They are looking for a solution. Usually it, it could either leads to or directly or indirectly a purchase agreement further down the road because you are going to solve a problem for them. But it could also be a grant, as I mentioned earlier, that is uh, where you are going to come up with a problem and a solution. But solicited means that they are actually have identified a need um, and you can then respond to that. There's usually a set time frame. It might be you get a month to submit a uh, proposal, or it could be that you get two years. Um, it's all going to vary. Um, it could be that contract opportunity, but as I said, there are uh, solicited uh, opportunities that are in the grant world as well. It could be that they're just trying to figure out who's making uh, you know, the 5G security systems, and there might not be a purchase agreement at the end. They could be doing their market research, but you need to read the fine details. So funding announcements. This is where the, the details are. When I say they're solicited, um, we call them in general a solicitation, but they're different types of solicitations. So sources sought, you might see this, if they're just trying to see, if they're doing customer discovery, they're trying to see, hey, who are the companies out there that are doing 5G security systems? You know, it might lead to something, it might not, but it might get your foot in the door if they then come back with an actual agreement, they might contact you directly. So that's what a source of saw is. Similar to that is requests for information. Instead of just finding out which companies are out there doing 5G uh, security systems, they might say, hey, if any of you out there can do 5G security systems, you know, what's the framework that that would look like? You know, how long would it take to develop something? There, there, it's a more in-depth customer discovery where they're actually, they're trying to figure out more details. Um, they might or might not have funding uh, eventually to it, but right now they're just trying to see what's out there. They don't even know. You know, the government sometimes can be ahead of the curve and sometimes they can be behind the curve. And if they are behind, maybe they're trying to say, well, what's out there in the, the private sector that we could utilize. FOIA, uh, funding opportunity announcement. This is, when it says funding, that means there is funding tied to it. They are actually saying, this is what we are going to pay you for if you can propose something we are interested in. The fo uh, it's a funding opportunity. Uh, it could be, a, a, could be a contract, but it's usually a grant. And this is where they say, you put in a proposal, you tell us the details of what you're gonna do with our money, and we will see if you meet our criteria, we will fund you. Broad agency announcement is similar to the FOIA in that it is uh, also known as a BAA, but this is usually gonna be for a contract opportunity. A BAA say, we have funding available, we are looking for solutions, and if those solutions then are meet our needs, we could then follow up with a purchase agreement. So this is going to be for application research, like um, and more the R and D research and development funding, um, or it could be for a straight contract at the end. But this is where there's funding mechanism. Usually, it's going to, if you're going to when you see BAA, think contract. Then there's RFP, request for proposal. This is off, This is close to the funding opportunity announcement in that they say, yeah, we definitely have money. We have money that's not only been authorized by Congress, because remember, all federal money has to go through Congress. They have to go through an authorization period and they have to then allocate funds for it. So you could have the there could be a program out there that they have authorized and then they go through the budget cycle and no money's given for it. Once you have an RFP 
that means that they have authorized and they are then going to actually um, have money to uh, pay you if your solution is appropriate for them. Then there's RFQ, which is similar to a broad agency announcement, but you're going to have to go through a few more hoops for them. So you're going to tell them what you're going to do for a contract and you're going to tell them how much you're going to charge for it. Sometimes with FOIAs and RFPs, there is a, and BAAs, there's a set amount of money and you are getting close as you can to that dollar amount, but there's not going to be um, a competition based on say uh, pricing. So they're gonna be comparing, you know, all the apples to apples um, and then they will look at pricing versus RFQ, they are gonna use that quote um, you know, maybe it's time, maybe it's money. If you say you can do it in three weeks for a thousand dollars, um, and somebody else says that they can do it in two and a half weeks for fifteen hundred dollars, it might be. It's probably going to be money driven, and so the uh, one thousand um, dollars, but three weeks is usually going to be the one that they choose. But not also always. They could go after the one that's uh, quicker but costs more money. So if you remember a few years ago, um, they, um, what is it, the, um, on I-85, just north of Midtown, there was a section of the bridge that collapsed um, and they were trying to get that bridge on I-85 open as soon as, as possible. So they were looking for not best price, but best time as it's called. So they were saying, we'll pay whatever, we just want to, it's the solution. Then there are things called schedules. You've probably heard of maybe a GSA, the General Service Administration. This is where you have been basically pre-qualified. So if you are pre-qualified, you are on a GSA schedule. Let's say you're doing that 5G security system. Maybe they did a sources sought or an RFI first, and then they um, say, well, we're only going to put this RFP out for the ones that responded to our sources sought. So if that's the case, then you're put on a, a pre-selected list, a GSA, and they're, instead of it being open to the whole world, they might open it to a hundred potential uh, contractors or, um, and then you put in your solution. Um, it might still be an RFQ at that point, but your pool is smaller that you're, of your competition. Um, and you've already been pre-qualified, so supposedly it goes quicker, but it is the government. So let me tell you, anytime you're going after government funding, it's going to be a, a, a process, and that might take longer than what you hope for it to be. So eligibility. First, you have to think if you're eligible. In all of those, the sources sought, the RFP, the FOIA, the BAAs, there's going to be a section that's going to call, be called eligible or eligibility. So uh, are, you know, is it only open to universities? Well, unless you are a university, you're not going to be eligible for it. Or it could say it's a small business set aside. Hey, that qualifies. Yeah, maybe I could go after that funding. Maybe it's for private companies. Maybe it's for nonprofits. Be sure to look at what the eligibility is if you can apply. But if you're not el eligible, think should you be the lead applicant? You might decide to partner with someone. Maybe you could be the applicant is Georgia Tech and you are a sub on Georgia Tech's um, uh, permit, uh, solicitation proposal. And if you are a sub, then you might be able to reap some of the benefits without having to actually deal directly with the government. You might be, you know, it might be you have another company that's kind of in the similar space and you're kind of going to tag along on their proposal and learn the ropes, so to say. So think, are you eligible to apply? And if not, if you are eligible or if you're not eligible, should you be the lead applicant? So this leads me to my baby. Um, this, these are two programs, SBIR and STTR. This is where I spend the majority of my time helping 
companies understand and try to obtain funding from these two programs. Why? They are for sm both for small businesses, which with working at ATDC, you qualify as small businesses. You're under 500 employees. Um, and also this is for innovation. It's to lead to um, products with high commercial potential. It's these innovative, disruptive technologies that they'll pay for. Um, and, the, you know, I try to help companies with this. So this is just a brief uh, commercial for these programs. And if you're interested in learning more, we can discuss offline or you can attend some of my future classes. But I just wanted to introduce you to these two programs. These are solicited uh, funding. So you can't just apply for them anytime. You have to wait till they solicit. Sometimes they are soliciting for problems they have, a contract. Sometimes they are soliciting for problems they've identified in society, a grant. So um, once you have decided which agency might be appropriate for you, hey, let's have a conversation or let's have a conversation before and I can help you strategize. So the details of this program is it's known as America's Seed Fund. Seed Fund means that it helps launch your company. As I said, it can be for up to companies up to 500 employees, but usually the companies that I work with that get funding are gonna be less than 10 employees. But if you uh, need help uh, getting some of the funds, then you, you might wait now. If you don't, if you wanna focus on what you're currently do doing, this might not be for you, or you might use it as a mechanism to actually launch your company. Um, or you could use it as you know, years down the road, once you have an established company and you uh, say, hey, I want a second product line or a third or fourth product line, this might be for you. $3 billion is available every year to small businesses. It's to help you do the research and research and development to have a product with high commercial potential. That means you're, they want you to make a lot of money. They want you to be successful. There are 11 agencies that participate in SBIR, and of those, five also participate in STTR. The main difference between those two programs is STTR requires you partner with, say, a university or a federal lab. Then SBIR, you can or you don't have to. Okay, that's the main difference between those. And it is for high tech, cutting edge, risky. They want new, they want disruptive. So it's not a loan. You don't have to pay it back. If you're successful in your research, great. It's helped you uh, go further down the pipeline. If you're not, you don't have to pay it back. The other advantage of this pro these two programs is it's non-dilutive, meaning you're not giving up equity of your company in exchange for the funding. And you are not giving up um, your IP, it is still your IP. Uh, and you, then um, it does help you what they call de-risk your technology so that you become attractive to investors. So a lot of times you might have approached an investor maybe a little too early and they're like, well, it sounds interesting. Come back when you're further along in the development. Come back when you've reached um, a, you know, X milestone." Well, how are you going to get to X milestone? This might be the appropriate way, a funding mechanism to get you there so that then you are attractive to those investors and your technology has been developed uh, to a higher level, which then helps you get a higher valuation because you are um, further developed than you were when you first uh, decided to approach that investor. And this is, it's a competition. So awards can be anywhere, they're in phases, so you don't get the money all in one lump sum, but awards for a phase one can be around uh, one hundred dollars to $250,000, and phase two awards can be usually around a million to a million five, and some are jumbo with two, three, four million dollars attached to them. Again, you don't have to pay it back. So that's my commercial. Um, these are funding programs. The announcements come out in FOIA's Broad Agency Announcement and RFP. So, so specifically to 5G Connected Futures, of the 11 agencies, all of these have recently 
um, currently or recently had topics or areas of interest that are in the 5G connected future. So everything Department of Transportation, Homeland Security, um, Department of Energy, National Institutes of Health, Commerce, uh, Department of Agriculture, uh, National Science Foundation, um, EPA. These are all interested in possibly things that you have to offer, whether they are going to buy them from you to help with some problem they have, or they're just giving you that sandbox to play in. Um, I have created a, a guide that gives you a lot more detail for the 5G, and I've updated it for this year. So at the end, if you want like a copy of that, you can send me an email and um, I can send that out to you. So with SBIR and SDTR, every agency is different. So those that I just put on there, the screen, they all, while they have the, the SBIR or STTR program or both, um, they're all different, different programs. They have different funding levels. That's why I gave you a range of the funding. They have different missions. Um, they have different times when they accept proposals. Some have continuous throughout the year. Um, some have windows where they might have three windows in a year. Some might have five solicitations a year. Some might just come out once a year. So if they close, if that window closed or it was due yesterday, um, you might have to wait until this time next year uh, to approach that agency. So now we're going to switch gears. Um, I've talked about how that some of these SBR, STTR, or some of these could lead to purchase agreements. Purchase agreements is called procurement. Not all procurement is going to start with an SBIR, STTR. You might just say, hey, I want to see what's out there. Um, it's competitive buying. So you might have to be competitive in your RFQ, your request for the, the quote that you give them. Um, it is a means for the government to acquire goods and services. Uh, it's what they're doing. They're looking outside to purchase something. And why would you do government procurement? Because they've got money. They are the largest purchaser of goods and services in the world, the U.S. government. So they do have money. And we're talking here mainly about U.S. federal procurement, but don't limit yourself to U.S. You might get a contract with something in the Canada or from the EU. Uh, so think that, hey, where could I sell this anywhere in the world? Some might have restrictions that say, oh, this is only for U.S. citizens or this is only for companies located in the Netherlands. Well, you might apply. That goes back to that eligibility requirement. If you're going to do a purchase or a potential purchase, you need to have a capability statement. This is something you need to, as a business, you need to have ready. It's like your resume for your company. It is what you do, how you do, how can somebody get in contact with you, what your past history is. Again, it's like a resume. Um, there are um, things called industry days, which are kind of like trade shows, but for the federal government has. So it could be, you know, an energy industry day, walk the floors and say, talk to people that are from government entities and say, hey, this is what I am working on. Could this be of interest to you? And they go, huh, sounds interesting. Let me see your capability statement and I'll get back to you. Just like if you were at a career fair, they would want a copy of your resume. So this is what you would um, have available. They, if you're doing it now virtually, could say, email it to me. You should have this as a business on the ready so that if an opportunity is appropriate that comes available, you can pass out their uh, capability statement. So how do you find these opportunities? Well, any federal money has to be, um, they have to quote, unquote, advertise it. Um, and this can be in the form of uh, a federal grants um, database called grants.gov. This is for any grant that the federal government has. They have to go through grants.com. Oh, um, hang on. Sorry. Somebody said Sorry. Yeah. Um, the, so that would be grants.gov. So if you say, hey, I'm only interested in grants, you can do grants.gov. There's a search mechanism. But be aware, it is going, you are going to be, have to use 
uh, broad terms, narrow terms, uh, synonyms, um, and it's going to take some time to go through all of these because, again, sometimes they're open long term, sometimes they're short term. You could search for past awardees to say, well, who's received awards in uh, grants from this um, agency on this program in the past? Um, so that's grants. If you say, no, I don't want to do grants, I only want to do federal contracts, federal contracts, the SAM.gov is has another search mechanism. And this is where federal uh, contract opportunities um, and wards are posted. And you can do a search there. There's another one called Fed Connect, which does a little bit of grants and a little bit of uh, contracts. So if you say, hey, I want something from the EPA, EPA posts their opportunities in Fed Connect as opposed to grants.gov or SAM.gov. Um, don't know why, um, but I would just have all three just search for the possibilities because there could be opportunities out there that you never even thought about. If you're interested in SBIR and STTR, their main site is SBIR.gov. And on this slide, I put the awards because this is where you can search um, who's received awards in the past. You can't usually apply for these same awards again. These are what's called closed, but it gives you an opportunity to see, hey, what I never thought of, you know, Department of Education is doing anything with 5G and you know, connected. So, hey, I never thought of that, but hey, let's look, investigate that ourselves. So it gives you a window into what they funded previously and they might fund in the future. If you say, hey, you know what? This federal thing is not for me, but I might be interested in what those foundations have. Maybe my, I have a nonprofit um, and I'd like to see what um, opportunities are there. Then the Foundation Center is a good place to start uh, for looking for those opportunities. Oops. Slide got in here twice. Sorry. Okay, so what's next? Go ahead, put your foot, put your little toe in the water and, you know, see what to do. Um, it might be for you, it might not. But first, go back and decide what type of funding do you need? What is the reason you are looking for funding? Is it for research, research and development? Is it procurement? Are you looking for operations money? What is it that you're looking for? Why, why, what type do I really need? Okay, explore those opportunities. Do the searches in those three, those uh, listing, the Fed Connect, the um, SAM.gov and the grants.gov, just to see what's out there. See if there are needs. Look at the agencies. Uh, see if you can identify a need within the agency, not just a perceived need, but it's an in-depth customer discovery. Um, sometimes those agencies are complex. I'll say most agencies are complex. If you're going to sell something or look into something for the military, that's Department of Defense. There's the Department of Defense, then there's the different components, Army, Navy, Air Force. Then within Navy, uh, there's NAV Air versus NAV C. And then within NAV C, there are different offices and different commands. Um, there are usually seven layers um, to be able to find the actual individual or the office that might need what you're wanting. So take some time to explore. If you're going for anything in the military, I would highly recommend that you partner with somebody who is um, who knows the military. Um, the DOD is a very relationship-oriented agency. They want to uh, work with people that they know or people that know them. I'll give you a hint. If you're going to go after SBIR, STTR funding, and you're going to go after anything from the DOD, the Defense Department, and any of their components, they don't call it SBIR and STTR. They say a word. They call it SIBR and SITR. So if you were to call, contact them and say, hey, I'd like to talk to you about your SBIR. I know what you need. They're going to probably write you off. But if you call up and say you're wanting to uh, talk to them about their SIDR, SIBR program or their SITR program, that at least gives them some knowledge that you do know a little bit about that particular agency. Again, this is that develop relationships, whether it's contacting the agency directly or working with one of their contractors. A lot of the agencies are actually staffed by uh, contracting companies um, that work full time for that particular agency. So get to know the agency, get to know the, uh, the offices, get to know 
what's available, how they do their operations. Um, so ask questions. You can search for those opportunities that I mentioned that, um, you know, it's, it's going to help you to understand uh, how they work. Even if you don't want funding right now, I would do some preliminary searches just to kind of get, like I said, get your feet wet, get your toe wet, just to see, you know, this might be a year from now, this might be five years from now, but at least you are aware of what they could want. If you say, yes, I need to find these opportunities now, you can start searching. Funding, as I mentioned before, takes time. So you might say, hey, I have identified a, a problem right now. There's an open funding announcement. It's going to close June 30th. Um, and then you will probably get the funding maybe by December. Or if they're doing it rush, it might be you might get the funding by August. That's rush from end of June to end of August. That is a rush for the government. Um, attend those industry days. Uh, find out if you're interested in, you know, Department of, uh, you know, Agriculture. Find out if they have industry days. If they have local industry days now with virtual industry days, they're doing a lot of those. Um, find them, attend them. That way, you get to know what they're interested in. We also have another organization um, at Georgia Tech that's a sister organization to ATDC. It's called the Georgia Tech Procurement Assistance Center. And they are a free service to any Georgia company looking to purchase, uh, to make, to sell to the government, whether it's federal, state, or local. And that is all they are dedicated to do is help you with contracting issues, help you identify, help you compete. Um, so if you say, hey, I just want to sell, I highly encourage you to uh, contact them. They have what they call counselors um, all over the state. And um, they have a variety of backgrounds and you can look on their website under their team and reach out to them um, for their help. Or you can talk to me and I can give you an introduction. Um, if you're a member of ATDC, I have a Slack channel. It's called uh, SBIR-STTR-Funding. And when I see specifically SBIR-STTR uh, funding announcements, as well as some others, I uh, post them here. So. Uh, you know, that might be a way just to monitor that site just to see, oh, I didn't realize that DOT just opened something. Now maybe I can explore that. And you can speak to me. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Um, I have office hours available, um, uh, you know, you, twice a week. I have different time slots. You can reach out to me. We can have a call. We can have a you know, Zoom. I can learn more about what you're doing and I can guide you and say, yeah, you're not going to do R&D or oh, you could do R&D or, oh, you probably just need to go for procurement or, hey, let's try this agency first and then another agency. Um, so let me know. And you can watch the ATDC calendar for related classes. For example, on the 30th of this month, I am having another class um, and it's called Partnering to Increase Your Capabilities. So this is you know, going to be specific to how can you increase capabilities by you know, using other resources from other partners. So that is my presentation. Um, it was just hopefully give you some buzzwords that you can at least say, oh yeah, I've heard that term before, but um, I know we're kind of running out of time. We started a little bit later, but I just want to um, say if anyone has questions, I can try to answer it. If you want me to, that's my contact information. If you want to send me an email, uh, and if you'd like a copy of that 5G Connected Futures guide that I created and updated this year, uh, let me know, and I can send that out to you as well. But um, and let me jump in right before we go to any questions. A couple things, real quick. So one is. Um, we will we will get this posted so that those of you who came late, there was some kind of issue. I don't know what it was, but some of you got the wrong URL, including Connie and myself. Um, so we will get that out. We will I'll make some arrangements. And also, if um, if you're interested in these documents, let Connie know or let me know if you are if you want to send. Uh, I've seen two questions in here. I will send those over in the chat window. I will send those over to Connie and we'll get back to. 
everybody. Um, Connie, do you want to have them send questions to me and I'll just compile them or do you want the questions straight to you? Either one, um, uh, you know. Okay, I, I, just go straight to go straight to Connie with questions. Yeah. Connie, that was fantastic. And if there's any yeah. time remaining, I'll open it up for questions. Yeah. Uh, you want to hit that first one, talk about finders, brokers for SBIR, STTR opportunities and contracts. Brokers. Uh, so when you say finders, brokers, um, there are companies out there that are uh, grant finders, um, that that's what they do. You can pay them money uh, to find them. Uh, there are grant writers out there. I am not a grant writer. I'm not a proposal writer. I'm a guide. I'm, I'm here to coach and to guide. Uh, but there are companies and you're going to pay them for it. Some have, um, you know, success records, uh, but, you know, unfortunately, you can put in the, the perfect proposal and still not get funded because maybe they didn't have enough money to go around. Maybe, um, you know, there were a lot of proposals and yours was very good, but not excellent. Um, so even if you pay someone, um, you know, there's chance that you still won't get the, the funding, but there are companies out there. There are also companies out there like grant administrators. There's a lot of pre-work that you have to do before you submit a proposal. You have to register your company in several different databases. And sometimes it's easier for you to say, hey, you got to take care of it. I'll pay you $500 and you uh, do all the registrations for me. There are companies like that out there. So if that's uh, I have a list of potential grant writers. As a state employee, I can't say you need to use this particular company or this particular grant writer, but I have a list of, AT of companies that ATDC has utilized or consultant, grant consultants um, that they've used in the past that I would send to you. Send me an email. I'm happy to send that out to you as well. I don't know if that answered your question. Okay. I think that covered both T and Laura's question on there. Okay. So. Uh, let me ask if there's other questions and let's keep them real concise because of the time frame. Okay. If you want to follow up, you can go through direct to Connie or I will pass it on to Connie. We will get you the documents. I will get you information on the recording. So especially those who came in late or like me, it was such a fire hose. I'm going to go listen to Connie. That was fantastic. But there's so much there that I'm going to go back through it another time. Just so that I know very quickly when to answer a question, go talk to Connie. <laughs> Happy to do it. Um, so, like I said, let me know if you have questions. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Thanks again, Bob. Thank you, Connie. And all right. Thank you all for joining us. Bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye. All right.